Today's a day where I have zero positive news to report. We're talking about Rondo breaking his thumb, Russell Westbrook, one of the best players in the NBA, whether you agree or disagree with that statement, whatever. Him being out for a minute with this new illness that's going around in the world. And then we have Adrian Wojnarowski, also known as Woj, who's suspended from ESPN without pay. So first and foremost, I'm gonna talk about the Los Angeles Lakers and Rajon Rondo. So yesterday at practice, Rajon Rondo fractured his finger. If you didn't know that he fractured his thumb, well, now you know. But as a Laker fan, and just as a fan of basketball in general, and someone who cares about the well-being of other human beings, it is unfortunate that Rajon Rondo has to undergo surgery now. But I'm here to give us Laker fans a little bit of hope and tell y'all that it's not really that, that bad. So would it have been better if this happened back in March when the season was first suspended? Maybe Rajon Rondo like slammed his finger in the car door and then he had to get surgery or something? Sure, it would have been a whole lot better if this happened a couple months ago, but now the dude would have been completely fine and this would not have been something to worry about. But we still have approximately two and a half weeks before the NBA picks back up. So what does that really mean for Rondo and what does that really mean for the Lakers? Now, I'm sure half of the Clippers fan base was happy as heck when they saw that notification that Rondo was going to be out. They're like, oh, less competition. The Lakers don't have Avery Bradley. So those fans of that little brother team we have in LA, they were probably throwing a party, not even going to lie. But here's the thing, right? Rondo is going to require surgery. They said that yesterday in the report. And he's going to be out for six to eight weeks. So we know that games don't start until July 31st, which gives us a little bit more than two weeks. Today's the 13th. Two weeks from now would put us around the 27th. So like I said, it's about two and a half weeks before basketball even starts back up. Now these first couple of games are gonna be more like scrimmage games in my opinion. We're talking about dudes who have not played basketball at the NBA level in three and a half to four months. And sure, some of them have been training in their house and staying in shape, but others have been getting fat. And okay, granted, I see the point that some of y'all might be making that they've been practicing with their team now. But guys, Everybody knows that practicing with your team a couple of times, a couple of weeks before game start is not anywhere near the same as playing top competition at the highest level. These guys are not ready to be running 48 minute games. And keep in mind, these are actually just scrimmage games. I call them scrimmage games because that's the type of intensity I believe we're gonna see just while these guys get back in, into the groove of things. So with Rondo being out these first couple of games, I think it's gonna be okay for the Lakers. Now here's my reasoning for it. So Rajon Rondo requires surgery. I'm sure that's gonna happen sooner rather than later. Like he might even be undergoing surgery by the time this video gets uploaded, okay? And then he's gonna be out for a total of six to eight weeks. So by the time the Lakers actually need a veteran point guard, Rajon Rondo will be fine to step on the court. And will he be at the top of his game? Absolutely not. But no one is gonna be at the top of their game, not even LeBron, when they first step back onto the hardwood after so many months of not playing. So from there, it'll take Rondo a couple of games, maybe like a week or two to really figure things out. Heck, it might even take him the first series of the playoffs to really get back into the groove of things. But even if it takes that long for Rondo to get back into the system with the Lakers and be playing at top level, I think we would be absolutely fine in the first series of the playoffs, even if Rondo was the team manager. We don't really need Rondo on the court for the first round of the playoffs. As long as we have LeBron fully healthy, knocking on wood, and as long as we have Anthony Davis, Davis fully healthy, I think we'll be straight. If this was somebody else, then I would be a little bit more worried, but this is Rajon Rondo. And for some of y'all who might be like, what are you talking about? This is Rajon Rondo. You're making it seem like he's the Rock Johnson or something like that. Guys, I've been watching NBA basketball for a solid minute now. And in case y'all don't remember this injury, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen. But just as a warning, this is nasty to see. It's not as bad as the Kevin Ware, but just look at his left arm. Rondo shaking up on the play. Oh, wow. See how it and after that, of course, he was out for the rest of the season. Psych, he came back the same game and played just fine. So Rajon Rondo, he's a bad man. I don't really think this fractured thumb is going to affect the rest of his season. If it were someone else, yeah, I'd be more worried. But with Rajon Rondo, knowing he's a veteran, knowing he likes to scrap, and knowing he's came back from being injured a couple times in his career and been just fine, I think he'll be okay when we really need him in the playoffs. Now, Russell Westbrook. Today's my dad's birthday. 
birthday. So last night I stayed up late planning and editing a video to have pre-made so that today I don't have to record any videos and I can just spend this time with my dad. And because of that, I went to bed late, I woke up late, and when I woke up, I saw the notification on my phone about Russell Westbrook. I read the report that came out on it and there's something that I feel like is missing in the report. I read a second report as well to see if they covered it, but they didn't talk about it either. So I figured, you know what, it's time for me to hop behind the camera and say a thing or two. So you all know the obvious, Russell Westbrook caught the illness. But here's something that may not have been so obvious. Do you guys remember a couple years ago when Draymond Green called Kevin Durant the B word in the middle of a game and the Warriors suspended Draymond Green for that? Not the NBA, the NBA couldn't care less. Adam Silver and all of them were probably like, yeah, Draymond Green, you're right. You're, you're right for calling him that. What he did is a B word move, so we're not gonna say anything about it. But the Warriors front office, due to all the tension that that confrontation with Draymond Green and Kevin Durant cost, they decided to discipline Draymond Green and they themselves suspended him. So what does that have to do with Russell Westbrook, you might be wondering. So when I saw the Russell Westbrook notification, I saw a notification right after it coming out saying that a Rockets player had broke the quarantine rules and because of that he would have to be self-isolated for eight days. Now I'm not a detective and I'm not someone who claims to know it all, but if you had to put two and two together, I have a small feeling that something with this other guy breaking quarantine had to affect Russell Westbrook getting sick. And I don't know, I'm not trying to start that off as a new rumor or anything, but it would just kind of make sense especially because they released that notification right after. If this notification came out maybe three days from now, then okay, maybe I would not have came to that conclusion, but the fact that this notification came out right after, it seems like a cause and effect situation. And to be fair to them, nobody really knows. Like, no one knows how you get sick, you know what I mean? But if someone in your circle is breaking the rules, and now somebody else within that circle catches an illness, it doesn't really look too good, you feel me? That is just my conspiracy on it, I don't know. But now let's talk about what Russell Westbrook catching the illness means for him, means for the Rockets, and means for us NBA fans. Well, for him, quite obvious. It means that he's sick. He has to self-isolate for eight days, according to the report. And that caught me a little bit by surprise. I thought when you catch that illness, you have to be quarantined for a minimum of 14 days. But hey, I guess when you're rich and the, and the NBA, the rules don't apply. I don't know. Russell Westbrook on his Twitter posted saying that he does not feel sick whatsoever. So now I'm wondering, after eight days, if Brody still doesn't feel sick, is he going to be clear to join the team again? Because even if he doesn't feel sick after eight days, that doesn't doesn't mean that the illness suddenly left his body like when the monster's powers finally left. So Westbrook being isolated for eight days doesn't mean anything. There's other guys in the NBA who have also caught that illness and we haven't heard any word of whether or not they'll be able to come back. I'm not a doctor and even if I were, this whole illness is new to the world. So I cannot tell y'all for sure if after Russell Westbrook is quarantined, if he still doesn't feel sick, if it would be okay for him to step on the court. But just because I see the NBA playing everything on the safer side, I don't see him playing again the rest of this season. Because now that he's tested positive, even if he doesn't show any symptoms, imagine if he's still a carrier of that. He steps on the court and now he starts getting other people sick. Not only could the NBA potentially be looking at a huge lawsuit if they allowed a player who tested positive to step back on the court, and as a result of that, that guy got a bunch of other players infected. But even without thinking about the possibility of a lawsuit, I don't think Adam Silver and the rest of the NBA would be okay with just letting someone step back on the court who a week or two ago tested positive for this condition. So if you ask me, I don't think we're going to see any more Russell Westbrook this season. I know that sucks for Rockets fans. If I'm keeping it 100, I know some of y'all are not going to like to hear this, but the Rockets weren't going to win the championship this year anyway. I know you Rockets fans really like your James Harden and you really like your Russell Westbrook, but I'm sorry, you guys were not going to win the championship this year. I do wish Russell Westbrook the best. At the end of the day, even if he was the worst player in the NBA, he's still a human being, you feel me? So I wouldn't wish an illness like that or an illness in general on somebody. All right, now let's talk about Woj. Now in yesterday's video, I titled it the most savage moments in NBA history. Something along those lines, right? And in that video, I mentioned that there was something brand new with Adrian Woj. And it was that a Republican Senator sent a letter to Adam Silver 
asking if NBA players could wear pro police and pro military slogans on their uniforms, like Back the Blue or Blue Lives Matter, things like that. And that didn't sit right with Adrian Wojnarowski, so he sent this senator an email saying F you. The senator ended up posting a screenshot of that online, and obviously it started going viral because that's not something we expect from the professional reporter and the professional NBA insider that is Adrian Woj. So as a result of all of that, ESPN suspended Adrian Woj. So right now he's suspended without pay. So if you saw LeBron's tweet saying hashtag free Woj, that's what he's talking about. Now to be fair, I don't really think ESPN cares that he said that. I think they just decided to discipline him to show that they're a professional entity, to show that they support their senators and all their government officials. And mostly because it's not a good look for their name. If I was in charge of ESPN, I personally wouldn't have suspended him because I think that the letter the senator sent out is more disrespectful to the black community than what Adrian Woj's response to him was disrespectful to him. I hope that makes sense, but basically I'm just saying that I think the senator's letter to Adam Silver and NBA personnel is more disrespectful to black people than Woj saying F you is disrespectful to him. If it didn't make sense the first time I said it, then I explained it again. Hopefully that makes sense. So I don't know. That's just my take on it. Do y'all think Adrian Woj should be suspended? I think this is a terrible time for Buddy to be suspended. The NBA is about to pick back up. This guy drops news before anybody else drops the news. This guy knows who's about to get traded before anyone else. He's the one who first talked about the Paul George and Kawhi Leonard getting signed with the Clippers two or three minutes before I saw an official report from Bleacher Report. So I think right now him being suspended is terrible, especially because in my eyes, and these are in the eyes of someone who's half black. So yes, I am a little biased. I don't think Woj did anything wrong. I think freedom of speech, and if you felt disrespected in that email, then you responded in a way where you felt was correct. And at the end of the day, Woj is a grown man. The senator is a grown man. Are we really suspending people over words? He's out here getting suspended over words. Meanwhile, Breonna Taylor's killers aren't even arrested over a murder. Meanwhile, George Floyd's killers weren't even arrested for a couple days. And the only reason why I believe they really got arrested was because of all the protests because people are still protesting for Breonna Taylor and were her murderers free doing whatever they want they could be making YouTube videos as well for all I know you feel me so for y'all to be suspending Adrian Woj for using words meanwhile the world has bigger problems and the people causing those bigger problems aren't being suspended aren't being arrested I think it's a problem but I don't know man y'all let me know what y'all think seriously this is just what I think if you watch this video till the end just give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button I'll see y'all tomorrow stay blessed stay safe stay up and I'm out of here peace